they should be enjoying their off-season ahead of the commencement of the upcoming Victorian Premier League. But brothers Glenn and Jason Trefiro have more pressing plans, focusing on helping to develop the next Harry Kewell or Mark Viduka. The brothers are highly regarded footballers in their own rights. Glenn was a member of the Young Socceroos in 2008 and Jason is the reigning VPL Player of the Year. Both starring as Northcote City won the inaugural Mirabella Cup last season. But for now they are the lead act behind Football Tech, an academy aimed at developing and improving the technical standard of young Australian footballers. Jason and I have, have always believed in you know, being technically good because if you if you're technically strong, then you feel more comfortable on, on the field. You can receive the ball in tight areas. You're not you're not afraid to to take the ball either way. You're not afraid to play one touch or two touch, and it's it just gives you power on the field when you're technically strong and when you're comfortable in those areas. And I mean, we 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 play ourselves as that attacking midfielder, and we feel comfortable on the ball, and we just try to pass on to the kids what we believe. And and to this day, it's it's been fairly successful, and most of the players that you know work with us are always the ones that are technically the best in their age group or, and we've got a lot of players now in elite football New South Wales programs mostly all of them are playing Premier Youth League at least and, and they didn't start at those levels when they came to us so obviously something we're doing is is working and, and, and benefiting the kids. Two of the success stories to emerge from the program pay tribute to that. Daniel Bragg is a highly rated member of perennial National Youth League heavyweights Gold Coast United Dylan Collard is currently on the books of Portuguese superpower Benfica. Both beneficiaries are being coached by the brothers, who have been described as players from a bygone era who entertain the romantics with their graceful style on the ball. I think uh, in Australia we, we sort of lack that, that creativeness. Um, so, yeah, in saying that, I guess, look, technically they've got to be sound to play a certain way. You know, you can't play a passing game and... Um, if, if technically you're not good enough. So you've got to start with the basics and um, get, get your techniques right. Um, but then, yeah, just, just creating that, uh, that environment where the kids, kids aren't scared to try things. Um, you know, that, that bit of creativeness, uh, almost like, like a number 10 um, around the world, they call them. So, uh, yeah, uh, that, look, that's what we love teaching. Me and my brother, that's what we've always grown up doing. So um, if we can help kids out uh, to improve that, um, it will only make... You know, the game in Australia, I think, I think it'd be better. But one of the unique features of the camps they run is that they're not just aimed at improving local players. The brothers have teamed up with former A-League player Naoki Imaya, now back in his native Japan and running an academy of his own, to promote footballing and cultural exchanges. Imaya bringing nine Japanese youngsters to Sydney, with plans afoot for Australians to head the other way over the next 12 months. In Tokyo, I run a program for basically for Japanese kids, um, not not necessarily for only for Japanese kids, but uh, I run a football academy in Japan, teaching them football, but uh, not only football, uh, English as well. They are getting them to learn English to um, to create you know more of a global footballer. Not because of Japan technically very good, but some players struggle when they go overseas. You know, language-wise, they don't communicate as well as um, as Aussies do when they travel. You know. And that communication, in a footballing sense, is something that's been of increasing benefit to both nations. It's it's good for the, the Japanese boys to come here because, uh, really, they're they're technically sound. All of them, um, they've brought up uh, fr from a young age around the ball, um, and you can see just in and amongst our boys, you know, how how comfortable they are on the ball, how relaxed they are, and their touches, their their passing, everything technically is um, is is brilliant for the, the Japanese. So. For our boys to see that, um, uh, you know, it's it's only going to improve our boys too. And uh, and our boys, look, we do we do have some technical technical players here that are very good on the ball. Um, but seeing how good the Japanese are, and then you know, it's only going to get them better too. So um, yeah, it's it's been a great link uh, with Noakes, and hopefully it's it, it keeps getting getting better and better. Well, like you said, um, technically they're very good, uh, very sound. Or you don't see many midfielders in Japan. With bad touch, you know. Um, but I, in a way, I think if the Australian football federation or like you know if the Australian football and Japanese football can mix with it, with each other, because obviously Japanese football they have good midfielders, they have uh, defenders and strikers with good technique, but you know they don't, they don't necessarily have that you know like the toughness or the physical side of the Australian game. So obviously, if the Australian can learn from the Japanese side, you said from the coaches. Um, they do over and over, you know, the technique, technique, uh, technical uh, training sessions. So maybe that's the thing, they got it right, but um, not, you know, maybe they do too much sometimes. They just rely too much on the technique. Um, 
well, obviously here with uh, Trifiro brothers, you know, in Australia doing the more technical, um, you know, uh, training sessions. You see Australian players with technique here, you know, and uh, when you when you combine the two, you have you have a team that can match the rest of the world. But Japan alone itself cannot match the world. You know, they they will go close to going to maybe the top 16 in the World Cup. Australia the same. They'll go, you know, top 16, but to be in the top eight, top four, like Holland, Germany, Brazil, Argentina. You need to have both, you know. You need to have the, I think, the physical side of the game as well, technical side of the game. So we can learn from each other. So um, I mean, hopefully in the future that, that happens through this uh, this um, um, link between uh, us and the Trophy Brothers. These boys come over there; they're around 12 years old, and you can already see that, you know, technically it's just it just feels natural to them. It looks natural. It it's it's very free when they play, and it's individually we're at that level. With, with with our boys as well, some of the boys here, but then you put them together and their understanding as a team, you know, they're playing together over there at the moment with our boys and their movement and, and their touches and everything, they, they, they they play more as as a group rather than individuals, you know, where I think at, at, at times Australian players are, are being taught to, you know, do their step overs and take it this way and, and dribble this, but it's not about, you know, being technically good to do those things it's about having them in your locker in case you need to but otherwise using your team and your players around you to do that and i mean noki continuously brings good players over and it's a good eye opener for our boys to see you know japanese boys and at at, at that level you know and even and as they grow older to senior level technically the japanese players are always you know that level above uh and and we at this stage are trying to figure out and, and, and see what they do over there and it's great to have this link with Noki because we're starting to bridge that gap and hopefully uh, we won't be too far away in the future. There's been a couple of familiar faces here at the week-long camp. Sydney FC stars Scott Jamison and Dimi Petrantos lending a hand to what they describe as a program that's important for Australia's footballing development. It's a, it's a little bit of a different program, I guess, to, to maybe some of the other academies going on. Uh, we know them as, as footballers. They're very technically gifted uh, players. What, what kind of things do you think the, the, the brothers are trying to work on with this academy? Oh, just um, all the all on the ball work, you know, um, their first touch, dribbles around the player, you know, one-on-one, two-v-one. Um, they're both great players and they've got... Um, a lot of experience and they can teach the boys a lot of skill. Look at the coaching staff that they have here and obviously with the Japanese uh, with Naoki. Um, I've, I've been fortunate enough to play with all three, Jason, Glenn and Naoki and um, the, the thing that stood out with me with them is, was their technical ability and I think that's one of the most important things these days with Australian football is technical ability and uh, the, the especially here at Football Tech with Jason and Glenn, you know, they bring um, they bring that to the, to the younger kids here and I think, um, you know, you see these days in Australian football, it's about size or, or, or strength or anything like that. But here it is about improving technique and, and working on the, 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 the basic of the game. And that's, uh, you know, passing, dribbling and everything like that. So I think it's um, you know, a fantastic uh, program they've got running here. And um, I'm very happy to be uh, involved with it, yeah. As are both the parents and children. The boys um, have a great philosophy on the football. And uh, my boy loves coming down here. It's, it's really enjoyable and uh, he learns and gets heaps out of it. So. What, what, what is that philosophy? Because we talk, there's, there's so many different academies, so many structures and programs that different uh, state and national bodies are running. What is it about this one that, uh, that, that the kids enjoy? Uh, my boy enjoys um, the freedom to be able to express himself. Um, he uh, enjoys uh, the, the passing and movement in small, small games. Um, you know, not just kicking a long ball, but uh, really playing feet and moving and, and just working that that style um, out and uh, my boy likes playing in the midfield and Jason and Glenn are midfield players themselves so they, they really help his game a lot. A collaboration between Australia and Japan that's set to be a long-term win-win situation for both nations. Seno,